G'day viewers, welcome to another episode of O Magic's Kitchen. I'm Fred O Magic, as you all know, and uh, today we're going to uh, have a look at oysters. No, not oysters, mussels, mussels and pippies. And a little bit of the idea of this episode is to show you that you can go down to the beach and pick these pippies and mussels off the sides of rocks and things in the pier and stuff for free and take them home and cook them. Now I haven't done that today, but somebody else has. And uh, we've been down the market this morning and bought some. And uh, so these, I understand, have come from Vic Market. They come to a store uh, into the eastern suburbs. I had to go to Springvale from Dandenong to buy these. I normally would go to Dandenong Market and not open today. Um, so um, I've gone to a fishmonger in uh, Springvale, a very well-known uh, I looked like he was Chinese or Vietnamese or something. I don't know. That. Couldn't pronounce the name of the shop. But anyway, thanks, guys. And uh, the main point is that this is as, as fresh as we can get. i um, like to just mention also, when you are dealing with any seafood, my motto is you buy today, you eat today. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. Now, I bought these this morning, like I said. Ideally, you'd go down to the beach and get your own. But you can't get any fresher than that. And we'll talk to you a bit more about... Some little secrets and tricks um, like when you are dealing wash with your hands. I washed them before, but just so you see me do that again. And I'll grab my tea towel up there like that. So I want to get into these pretty quickly because I want to see what they look like. And this is a new shop. I haven't been to this one before. Um, but I'm assured that they're fresh. In fact, when I was in the shop... Uh, I asked for some pippies because I couldn't see any on the shelf and they were still in the box in the esky. He hadn't actually loaded them onto the, uh, onto the, uh, uh, on the shelves yet. So these, so they are your standard uh, black mussel, they call it black mussel. Okay, now these are pretty common around the place. They're not green lip mussel. The green lip mussels are very expensive for the same sort of product. They're a little bit bigger and it's really not worth spending the extra money on the green lip mussels, although if you wanted to, you can. They're a bigger mussel as well. They take up more room in the frying pan. I've found these to be more ideal and they're cheaper for what we're doing today. Okay, I think this whole basket here was only $7 for that much, which is quite a lot. Now, there's not a lot of meat in these, so you need to have quite a lot of them uh, to get a meal. So, I mean, I could probably eat all those. I'd definitely be able to eat half of them, which is what we're gonna cook today, about half of those, I think. Um, and anyway, enough talk about the mussels. We're gonna now show you the pippies. Now, a lot of people don't know what pippies are. Most people know what mussels are, but the pippies, are like a mussel, but they're a little bit sweeter. And we'll show you those. Now, once I show you these, you'll be familiar. Uh, down the beach, you'll see these even in the sand, the empty shells. And you've got to find the ones that are not empty, obviously, for the meat value. Um, and we just cook these the same as mu uh, mussels. So we'll show you that as well today. And these are quite nice to eat as well. Um, these are more common on the beach than the mussels are. Um, so first thing we've got to do is get our pan going over here uh, and I have prepared some rice which I'm going to make with this dish as well. Uh, when I say prepared some rice, so I boiled the kettle before and put some hot water into a cup with some rice in it so that it's pre-softened so it's going to speed the dish up a little bit. Okay, because that's the longest part to cook in this dish. The mussels will only take two or three minutes to cook themselves. Okay. Um, I might put a few uh, little prawns that I bought as well. I can also put a few prawns in this dish on top. The idea of that is when the prawns are cooked, they'll go red, and that'll tell me that the mussels are cooked as well. So bear with me for a second. We need some butter. Um, with seafood, butter is a pretty good choice rather than oil. 
um, especially with the muscle stuff. Uh, just adds a bit more flavour. So a nice dollop of butter in the pan. And we'll start with our other ingredients. We need also an onion, a small one. No, that's not a small one. Okay, look, here. Yeah, that's a good size, all right? That's half red, half uh, green. It's not a different sort of chilli. Green chilies are first. Then they go a little bit darker, ready, sort of um, purple colour. They're still good. And then they go red. When they go red, they need to be picked and eaten them because they're now going to go off. That's like the fruit is ripe. It's the same chilli in this case, in my case. These are uh, jalapeno, which we grow on the property uh, on O Magic Park here. Um, so again, we're going to include something from the garden, which we always do. We've got to get our main ingredients in. So we've got to cut up some of there. This chili was frozen and it will still cut nicely, as you can see even though it's frozen, I did put it under a little bit of water to just crack the freeze so that I can chop it up. And it's, it's thawing out very quickly on my cutting board here. Oh, I won't have that bit. Cut my fingers off. Don't be scared to waste a bit at the end. Don't try and cut right down and save as much of the fruit as you can and then cut your finger off. Just waste it. So whack that in, chilli. Bit of chilli first. We're putting our raw ingredients in first to get them cooking them along. And we're going to do a bit of onion. So we need to just cut this in half. So we use a lot of that, a fair bit of the onion. It's a small one, so we're going to use it all, I think. So you know how to do this, don't you? You cut down there like that very carefully, and you do a couple of slots down that way. All right, see what I'm doing? And then you just, down you go. Follow your fingernail down there again. And you'll have all these beautiful little bits of onion. And again, waste the end bit because you don't want to cut your finger off. All right, chuck that in. Right, now that is our raw ingredients in the pan. Get them moving around. We need now some... Uh, garlic, no this is ginger, we are going to use garlic, we'll put the ginger first, a little bit of ginger, I don't like ginger much but when you cook with it, um, it does add a flavour, don't put too much and overpower, yeah, so now for the garlic, a little bit of garlic there, okay, and the rice can go in now as well, I'm turning it around against the camera there, that's fine. We're doing circles. Whoops. That can go in. And I want all this to cook in together now. Like that. There. The rice went in, which was sitting for a while, remember? We've got to turn this up now. And I want to put a little bit of saffron in. And now saffron is a fairly expensive product. Um, I bought a small bag once, about that big, and it cost me $10 or something. So I don't know, wouldn't like to guess how much this bag cost. Last, this was donated by a good friend of mine. Thanks, mate. And uh, um, to me, that looks like a $50 bag. The last time I bought a $50 bag, oh, blimey, it, it had green stuff in it. So uh, it's very expensive. Anyway, we'll put some saffron in. This is saffron. It's not green stuff. Okay, we've got our saffron in there now. Uh, really what we're doing now, we've just got to get this cooking up a little bit. Um, want a little bit of soya sauce. The soya is to add a bit of salt and flavor now into the dish. A bit of a squirt there, probably about one or two tablespoons, a fair bit. So we've got our base, some rice and stuff in there, you saw us put the onion in uh, and some chilli, different things in here. 
You can put what you like in there, really, but this is a dish that I put together. I, I think these flavours will be good. We need a little bit of pepper and salt and some mixed herbs, as usual. You know that I always use mixed herbs most of the time, and our pepper and salt. A little bit of salt. We've already got the soy sauce in there and some cracked pepper. We'll let that simmer along for a moment. And when we return, we'll put the uh, mussels in and we'll show you how that goes. Okay, so it's time to put the uh, mussels in. And I want to talk to you a little bit about, about that before we do that. We need to select these by hand. You're looking for mussels that are closed. Okay, anything that's open, you don't use. So I'm looking at these carefully and I'm going to rinse them as well. Because they're going to go into my rice dish, they will have to be rinsed. So I think we'll just put, say, that many. These are all closed. Closed, yep. So a little bit of water. Cold water. Don't rinse with hot water. <laughs> you don't want them to start cooking just yet. Right, that's those. Now, ooh, yep, yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, now, your pippies are the same. So again, I'm looking for all closed. Now, in these bags, I must say, there's not one here that's open, which means that these are really, really fresh. That's a good way of checking if they're fresh. When you're at the fishmonger, look in the window on the, they've got all the stuff on the ice in the uh, thing there. If the oyster, if the uh, mussels or the pippies are open, don't buy them. Maybe go somewhere else. So I'll just pan up closely on all of these. Nothing is open. None of them are open. The whole bag, none of them, which means they're fresh as a daisy. Okay? So I haven't discarded one. Okay? I'm these very in. impressed, in fact. And you push them in just so they sit, push the nose in into the rice. Pushing the nose into the rice like this. The nose. When they crack open, they'll open up out, not the other way. If I do that, they'll open into the soup. That's no These good. will also raise the pH in your fish tank. Rather than using pH up, use any shells, actually. So you don't throw these out. Craig will use these in the turtle pond to raise the pH, for example, on O Magic Park. I've got some prawns, and these are tiger prawn from the same place. These were frozen, they've thawed these out, which is fair enough, because they've been prepared, okay? I'm just gonna put three of these in the dish. Prawns, little tiger prawns, uh, peeled, they've been prepared, right? Someone's done all the peeling for us. Now, just three on top there. When they go orange, you know, they're cooked, right? The mussels should be opening as well. So let's let those cook along now, and we'll come back. As soon as the mussels open, everything's ready. And there you have it. Um, I think we'll call this my own magic's mussels and pippies with rice. And I'll just serve up a dish, and we'll show you what it looks like on a plate, I suppose, really. So the idea is to get some mussels and some pippies. Oh, look at that one. Beautiful. And now I spoke to you about the shrimps they went orange which means the whole dish is ready so you include a shrimp one shrimp on the plate because it's supposed to be a mussels dish right so you, the the shrimps uh, were there as a cooking guide remember so one shrimp on a dish and put some rice in the middle bring that over a bit so we can get some more rice there and I want a few more mussels and pippies. Just scoop them out like that. Put that on the dish there. And if you wanted to serve this with a salad on the side, a little bit of a garnish, you can. But today it's all about eating the oyster, uh, eating the mussels. And you pull it apart like that. Okay. And you get a little bit of rice in your spoon, and you eat him up. Mm. 
Mm, oh boy. This is mine. I'm having this one. Thanks very much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time on iMagic's Kitchen. I'm having lunch. Oh, yeah. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Ha, ha, ha.